Today, I will show you how you don't need this book to invest in the financial markets. Hi guys, this is Dean from Pervasives, where we collect sector and industry economic data. Uh, you can learn more at pervasives.com. Today, I'm just going to show you um, just going to talk about fundamentals, uh, especially you probably already know this book and I'm going to show you how you don't need to read it uh, to be successful doing fundamental research. Especially uh, this book was written about almost 60 years ago now. So is it still relevant? Some people say yes, some people say no. So you have the, the uh, intelligent investor uh, school of thought that says that everything is about this metric, for example, PE, price per earnings. And that's the only thing you should focus on. You should only look at it one way, meaning uh, if something has a low PE, that's a good thing because it means that it's undervalued. Another school of thought will say, well, it is, if something has a low PE, it means it's cheap and it's cheap for a reason. Therefore, you should focus on company with, companies with a higher PE. And then you have another school of thought, which is throw everything away. Just focus on momentum, like day traders, and look at volume, simple moving averages, uh, golden crosses, stuff like that. And uh, when you start out, it's a bit difficult to... Uh, you have lots of information from everywhere and you don't really know who to believe. Well, I'm going to show you that you just need to believe in yourself and... Uh, what I mean is, why don't you go out and find out which financial ratios and metrics actually worked in, a, in let's say, a recent time frame? For example, let's say you could take the last year or the last three years and test out those metrics. So the, the point I'm making is we're going to audit those financial ratios and metrics. And you can do that with the Coifin Market Scatter. So this is the Coifin Market Scatter. I'm just gonna go over the basics. So you have the watch list selection. This is the list of stocks that you create. Then you can sector, you can have a, a sector filter. Uh, what I usually do is the table, table section, I minimize because I don't really look at that. I really look at this. So you have the y-axis and the x-axis where you put a metric on each. So on the x-axis, I have the total return percentage for one year. On the y-axis, I have a metric that I pulled out, which is EBIT estimates year on year change percentages for the year, for the, for the next year. What you can do if you have an outlier like this, which kind of uh, screw up the rest of the data, you can go to the little cogwheel and let's say we're going to stop at 150. So we're going to say maximum 150. You have a little a better view. The most important part with the market scatter is you're looking for a correlation that goes up like this. Now it's never going to be a perfect line. So let me just pull the arrow. You want something like this. Okay. And it's never going to be perfect, but what you want is you want to have a, an indication that things are correlated and it goes up like this. So if I take another metric, so this one, it looks like it's kind of correlated, which means that the companies which had the higher EBIT estimate year on year change for the next year forecasted are somewhat correlated to their last year's performance, meaning they had a higher performance if they had a higher EBIT estimate. And that's what, you, that's what you're looking for. If I change this to the most famous metric, PE, let's take the last 12 months. As you can see, it doesn't really go like that, okay? This is the PE for the last 12 months. I don't really see this thing right here. So for me, this means that within the international chemicals industry, I'm not sure that I should just invest based on the PE. So yeah, as you can see, maybe 
you know, you could read for hours on end this book and then by the end of it, maybe it's not really great advice as, as in for today. And what's great is as well, if you think about it, if you go back or if you go forward 20 years later in 2040, maybe the market will be a very different place. Some very different metrics will be important. But what you can do is you can just start again from the market scatter, study all the metrics, find correlations and use that one. And I think for that, the market scatter is really good. Let's change the selection to the S&P 500. Now, as you can see, if I, I will remove the outliers, these four outliers, maybe this one, and I'll go and put the maximum at 200%. Same, we're gonna remove all these outliers there. We're gonna make the PE maximum 150. Okay, well, again, I am looking for something like this and I don't really see it. Um, I would probably look at another metric and see if uh, there is some improvement in the correlation I'm looking for. Valuations. Let's explore maybe the forward P, estimated for year one. So this is for next year, the PE for next year. Okay, same principle. We'll cut out anything above 150 PE, just so we get a clearer view. And we'll cut out stuff after 150 here too. Minimum, I'm gonna put zero and zero. Again, I'm not sure I see what I'm looking for here. It's kind of all over the place and I don't really see that correlation. Let's go and look at the analyst forecasts, analyst estimates, forecast forward growth, EPS estimates year on year change for the, for the next year. Okay, let's clean it up. Okay, now I'm starting to see a little bit more of a correlation. It's not huge, but you can see it kind of starts to move in that direction, which is good. That was for the EPS estimate. Let's try the ratings, the average analyst rating. Okay, interesting. Again, a bit all over the place, so I'm not gonna zoom in. Let's change it to the NASDAQ 100, which is much higher market cap. Okay, let's go back and change this to board growth. Okay. Okay, there as well, you can see there is somewhat of a correlation. It kind of follows uh, it's not never going to be perfect. Think about it. We're just looking at the total return for one year against the metric. So every company is different. They'll behave differently. But this is what we're kind of hunting for. We're looking at, okay, market capitalization is higher on that sample of stocks. Let's see how that financial ratio has behaved against the return for the last year. So we're basically auditing our financial ratios. Now what you can do is take, what, take it one step further and go there and go and hunt within your own dashboards, within your own sectors. So for example, if we go to, for example, building products, zoom out. Now we do have less companies, but you can see it kind of is like that, isn't it? It's moving in that direction. Let's take another sector commercial and service services and supplies, containers and packaging. You can really play with the data, with the market scatter, and I, and I really like it. And the next step will be to find correlation with two metrics. So for example, if we take the EBIT estimate year on year change, let's go back to the S&P 500. Let's take the ratings, so the average rating. So on one side, on the x-axis, we have the analyst rating average. On the y-axis, we have the EBIT estimate year-on-year -year change percentage. And as you can see, 
let's change the put the minimum at three now it looks like there is a little bit of a upward correlation it's very min minute it's very subtle but it checks out meaning that the higher analyst gives higher ratings to higher potential growth which makes sense and you can see how you can play with the data now find metrics that correlate with each other audit financial ratios and metrics on the s p 500 or more narrower indexes audit financial ratios on a specific industry within a geography you can audit financial ratios on different regions as well so what can pervasives do for you get sector and industry short-term economic data that we collect thousands of unstructured data that we compile and process so you can get what matters go to pervasives.com today and explore which industries and sectors are growing or contracting